What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we are back on this twin turbo Chevelle. We're gonna be doing some sheet metal parts and finishing out the engine bay. But first, we got a package from FedEx. So let's crack it open and see what we got. This part of the video is sponsored by eBay Motors. With over 122 million parts used and new on their website, you can get the right parts at the right price. Let's check out what we got for our project because we got some goodies in here. They even have a ton of salvage parts in stock to fit the needs of even the most niche builds. We picked up a set of BMW hood latches as well as these really cool GTR door handles. We don't like doing anything the easy way, guys, so we got some fabricating to do to make these parts fit on our twin turbo Chevelle. But if you're not down to chop and weld, eBay Motors has fitment you can trust with a 90 day return, 12 month warranties. You don't have to sweat over the parts that you're ordering not fitting on your ride. eBay makes finding the correct parts even easier with the My Garage feature. My Garage lets you save your vehicle so you can always have the correct car for the specs you plugged in while searching for the parts you need with the option of even saving multiple vehicles at once. eBay Motors even has an app so you're not tied to your desktop, letting you buy and sell vehicles and parts anywhere in the world. I just sold my scooter on eBay Motors. What are you doing? Oh, I just bought Kalel Scooter on the eBay Motors app. Anyway, check out eBay Motors in the link below in the description or go to ebaymotors.com. We'd like to thank eBay Motors for sponsoring this portion of the video. Now let's start working on some sheet metal and getting these parts installed. Last time we were on the turbo system, we finished up the headers, we put on our wastegates, our blow up valves, everything's looking nice and blinging. Our turbo system and cooling system is pretty much done. If you haven't watched those episodes, go ahead and click the link in the description below, get caught up to this point because a lot's been done to get us to here. Now. As you can see, there's a lot of voids, a lot of things that are missing in the engine bay. It's very incomplete. It looks very race car right now. So we're going to bring this into more of a street car. Our main focus is gonna be this big closeout panel we're gonna be making here. For right now, we just need to close everything out and then we can start adding some more detail. Just like the firewall guys, as you can see, it's completely flush right now, completely flat with like no detail at all. I like to do that stage first and then add the details later. So we're gonna put the headlight buckets in, put the grill in, and probably do the underbalance just so we know where everything kind of lies. And then we're gonna make this close up panel kind of jive with everything. We'll just do a rough layout with our templating paper. It's a little bit thicker. It's not like full cardboard, but it's, it's nice and malleable. This then turns into your template when you can transfer it over the metal and start working it. So we're all put back together. Now we gotta put our hood on. We have some toys from Ring Brothers. Look at these things. They pivot up just like the factory hinge. They're just all billet. All right, so we got our lower piece fitting pretty nice. So this high point right here, I wanna take this and I'm just gonna come straight back with it so it sits flat inside of this corner. That way when we do our upper, it's a lot less contouring. Everything is really sharp and like very stealthy. So the close up panel, intercoolers, all that's gonna kinda jive around the same look. So we'll go ahead and cut this down right now just so we have that done. And then we'll start working on our upper panel that's gonna mate from this edge up into the actual intercooler. All right, so we got one side done of the under panel. This is what the close-up panel will actually fit on. We plated this all in. So now our lower piece is gonna fit nice and flat all the way across this guy and be able to start that transition going up top. The top's gonna be relatively easier. All we have is just this little S-curve right here on this side and on this side. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead and cut the 16 gauge sheet metal to cap this one in, get that all tied in. And then our lower piece is Pretty much clear and ready to go on the bottom. After that, we'll probably keep going on the cardboard and not cutting any steel just yet because I still want to lay out the pattern and try to figure out what's going to look good. This 
upper piece is about 90% there, I think. This is gonna be pretty complex up top. We have our little uh, turn downs right here that kind of close this off. And then we might do something in the center here. I'm not sure yet. And we'll start cutting this piece on the plasma, getting this situated first, and then we'll start working on this piece next. So I went ahead and had to cut the panel in half so that we can get this break. I'm gonna put a 45 on this leading edge. So what we're gonna use is a tipping die on our bead roller and bend this down basically, and then we'll probably have to just weld these edges up. So all we did was just cut the corners out. So we allowed these two tabs independently to bend down. And then we went ahead and weld that corner right there. Blended it all in and it's really nice and, and finished. Be a nice finished piece once this is all done. So we're gonna go ahead and jump over to this side, get this one with the tipping die, get it bent in. So we have our lower portion sitting pretty nice. I, kinda, I wanted to save this to have like a mounting point, but I think I'm just gonna get rid of the whole thing. This piece right here is structural, but this guy right here doesn't really do anything. So we have our other pieces right here that are gonna go behind the headlights. And this piece is gonna be actually dropped down about a quarter inch right behind the grill. So now what we're doing is we're gonna seam it back together. When you go and weld two pieces of metal together, two sheet metal pieces, you don't wanna weld them just loose. You gotta clamp them to something flat. So in this instance, we're clamping the back edge to stop it from basically these two pieces you're gonna weld here. These two pieces are gonna fold up like, book, like a book. I've done a bunch of tacks about a half inch away from each other. We're gonna start right here. You weld back, you let the gas hit it, you let it cool, and then you go to the next tack, and then you come back. So it's forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. And the point of that is that you're actually starting with cool metal and stopping where the hot metal is. And we're gonna work our way all the way up, and what you'll see is the heat transfer will kind of flare out and, and taper down. And you'll see once it's all welded up. Finally got this thing to fit in there and it is looking good. We're gonna go ahead and cut our upper piece and get some Clecos in so we can get this kind of position. And then we'll go in and then be able to fill the dots. All right, so we have our upper panel roughed in. What I'm gonna do is put two brakes in it because the core support has a angle on it gonna come up like this and I don't want it to go all the way up and like over the end tanks there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a brake in it right about here, bring this flat, and then we're gonna put a brake in these wings to come down and box in the sides over here. set with the upper panel now. Got everything fitting really nice, goes around the end tanks. And then we have our side closeouts. I'm gonna focus on welding this up first, getting this seam all dialed in. And then we'll work down to these panels that go above the headlights. We have to add a little piece inside of here, so that's gonna be a little tricky. And once that's welded in, the whole thing can be blended out. And then we can pull the whole panel out, finish everything up, and then it should be able to go back in all in one piece.
so the front panel is almost done. The only thing we have left is this seam. And I don't want to weld this on the bench because it might warp. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in with all the cleat covers, get it all nice and fixed in the car. And I have this little scab or doodle do. I'm going to put it right here. Get that in. And then we'll trim it back. Still have some more welding to do right here, but I don't want to do that out of the car. I'm going to use the car actually as an actual fixture as opposed to just letting it all be all loose like this. All right, so we have our top seam all welded in. This is looking pretty good. Now what we're gonna do is add a little bit more features here on the landing. So we're gonna probably do like a center spine that comes up, comes in here, and then we'll be able to put the mesh inside of these two pockets. Instead of just having something completely flat, just have something a little bit more to look at. And then over here, we're gonna add some more mesh. This will probably be cut back so you can see the turbos. We have our top piece cut and you can start to see the general shape that we're going to be going for. Now, I have to match this pitch right here in order to get this to drop down a quarter inch. I'm gonna take a quarter inch out of here, quarter inch out of here and here to be able to drop this pitch down. Once I get that, then I can start tacking it all in. And then it's just a matter of closing these in with some sheet metal and then a lot of blending and welding. And then this thing is pretty much there. So we have our first recess roughed in. So all I did was I took a piece of one inch strap and came back to the, where the bend starts. I went and found a piece of roll cage tubing and just bend it right over it. So where I make my mark, that's where I just take the strap and I just bend it over this radius and then just do it twice and it goes right in. Once we have those all set, then what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll actually mark this like that and we'll go all the way around it. And then we'll cut it on the cutoff wheel, get it pretty close. Then we'll tack weld it in place, blend it all in, and then finish welding it, and then do a final blend. We'll mark this one, I'll bend that one. I'm really liking the way this looks. All right, we got the lower all blended in. I'm really liking the shape of how everything's working out. And I'm pretty sure this is just gonna suck down nice once I get the lower portion, portion under there. Get some hardware on this thing to bolt down. Next step is to weld this upper seam, and then this front piece is pretty much done. We can start working on our windows over there. So I'm gonna go eat some lunch, and then we'll get back on it. When it's on the hood upside down like that, it's like, it's angled weirdly. I don't know what to tell you. Can I just eat lunch in five piece, please? Sheet metal fun. What I did was I made this profile piece, this like decorative piece, and we welded it straight to the flat sheet metal. Then when I went to cut the metal, the metal out of the back, it completely springboarded like a, like a bow. So all that heat just brought the front end up an inch. I'm happy with how this looks. This is completely flat right here, and this has like an arch in it, which is fine. So I could either planish this thing out, or I can just cut all of this basically where it was originally welded, bring it back down, and then re-weld it. I think I wanna do that as opposed to planishing because there's so much strength in these corners and this has been heated and stretched so much that if I try to planish these areas, they could bubble and bow out. There's probably someone in the comment section that's been doing sheet metal for years and is like, you're doing it wrong. But, you know, it's all trial and error. That's what's fun about building cars. So I tried the planisher off for a little bit. It didn't move at all. And I'm pretty sure what happened was when I welded the inside seam here and the upper seam here, this put a ton of strength in this edge. So what I did is I did a relief cut. So now this plane, this sheet metal, this like top area can move. And this back 45 ain't gonna do nothing with it. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna shrink this whole section here and try to get the whole middle piece to come up flat so that it balances itself out. Once I can get this all flattened out, then we can Clico this back in the car and then start working on this nose panel. We 
got the banana out of our closeout panel. It's nice and flat. So we got our magnets holding in place right now. Went ahead and we stretched this top piece with a shrinker and stretcher. Shrinking this up, getting it nice and flat. We replanished the flange over here. And then we went ahead and we planished out the center spine and then this flange, getting everything to relax back down. So now we're gonna go ahead and just throw a bunch of tacks on it. And then we'll probably end up clamping it in place and then finish welding it, blending it out. And this close out panel is done. All right, so our upper panel is all set. If I use some Gibbs and a Scotch-Brite pad, and that will actually coat the metal. It's like a, it's like an oil for leather almost. It gets down in the metal, stops from surface rusting when you have long-term projects like this. So next step is I'm gonna start building out the windows for the turbos. So I scalloped this back at a half inch flange so we can bolt the actual uh, additional panel on with the screen. So I'm gonna start getting the cardboard and start working some different shapes that might work. And then the front end of this car is pretty much all set. So we got our lids laid out for the actual turbo boxes. It's gonna isolate the air intake from the engine bay. So we're not sucking like hot air in from the engine bay. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these lids out. I'm gonna Clico them in because this floppy floppy kind of stops you from being able to box it in. So I wanna get the lids done first. I'll mark out where the mesh is gonna go and then we'll start making our sides. We got our pieces cut on our plasma table and got everything trimmed in on the bandsaw. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and drill some holes for our Clicos, get these panels in place of our template pieces and then start coming up with an idea as far as how we're gonna do our mesh. Now we're gonna finish out the sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw these in, see what they look like, and then we'll start laying out our mesh and then figure out what we're gonna do about the edges and then these panels are pretty much all set. I'm liking how the uh, closeout panel is going and also our little panels on top of the turbos. But before I go any further on that, one last thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that our latches are in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and modify these first before I start fitting them. So originally in the car, there's a, it's an additional piece that comes down that grabs this that you have to like release in order to get the hood to release. It's like an additional safety measure. We don't believe in safety. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of those and I'm also gonna get rid of this little tab down here. And then what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and place it inside the, the actual closeout panel and we're gonna through bolt it into the closeout panel. Underneath the closeout panel, we'll put additional bracing to tie it into the actual core support because it's gonna need a little bit more strength, but not like too much, it's not gonna go crazy. Once we have it in the core support or in the closeout panel and exactly where I want it, then we'll go ahead and clearance out underneath. We'll probably have to cut like a box or a hole in the factory core support to make basically a pocket for this to just sit down inside of. Then we can get our strikers in place on our hood and that should be pretty much done. We're gonna have to wait for a couple more pieces for the cables and all that stuff to release it, but I just wanna get it roughed in so I know it's pretty much all set. All right, so we got our latches in and we are going to be through bolting through the core, core support. So as you see from the time-lapse, I went ahead and notched out around the mount. Everything went in real nice. And then we'll end up just through bolting the latch, the core support and the closeout panel. And we're gonna stop there. All our sheet metal work for the nose of the car is pretty much dialed in. We're waiting for some mesh material to come in so we can do our grill inserts. We're gonna get with JC to make some billet beauty covers for a couple other pieces on the actual front end of the closeout panel. And then we have to do a little bit more sheet metal of the engine bay. Next episode, we're gonna be doing some GTR door handles. And we're gonna be working on the firewall and some other pieces to complete the front end and the outside of the car. We're we'll making our way around. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And don't forget, head over to salvagesavage.com, get yourself some gear, support the content. Thanks for watching guys, and we'll see you next time.